Yes, students, so we start with the next chapter called internal audit. Very nice, actually. You will un actually understand about the internal audits and all. So in the existing syllabus, the, besides this, no, they have discussed about the operational audit and management audit, some aspects. But in the new syllabus, they have removed it. They said, okay, just you focus on internal audit. It is more than sufficient. And in fact, in this, they have given you the reference of internal auditing standards. Our institute has got so many internal audit standards. At least in the existing syllabus, no reference. But here they have given the reference. At least like it is a starting point, awareness for me. Like if I want to pursue that profession, there are then other standards I need to read. If you get an internal, have you done an internal audit? Uh, have you gone through the internal audit standards? Uh, then here we just discussed. Huh? Otherwise, again, that itself is one subject, internal audit standards. So just we'll have a fair idea who is an internal auditor who, for companies, how it appoints. Okay, again. Any questions on this will be covered within these five areas. Let us first talk about some introduction about internal audit. Why in India? Is it mandatory? All those things. What will be the objective and scope? Performing internal audit 300 to 700. Internal audit report. Performing is more like planning to performance. And audit trail. There is something on the audit trail they have discussed. So I say five classification is sufficient. Now, what is an internal audit? See, as defined by the framework governing the internal audits, means just like we have got frameworks, no? Framework for preparation and presentation of the financial statement, frameworks for the audit, like frameworks for internal audit. Internal audit provides independent assurance. Yeah, remember, it provides independent assurance because the internal auditor is an independent guy within that entity. He is not assigned with any responsibilities there. He is not an executor there. It is an independent check which is happening. But within the overall supervision of the board of directors, he is not independent for the third parties, but in the organization is independent of the effectiveness of the internal control. Because internal control is given to him, risk management processes to enhance the governance and achieve the organizational objective. See, if your objective, see, it goes like this. You have got an objective here. But why you are not able to achieve the objective? Who is standing in between? The risk. Risk is going to stop. It's going to hit you, hit that objective. Correct, no? Anything. Always you see, we, we start with an objective. There are certain risks in the nature which are very independent. Risks are not partial. Nature is partial. Risk is something everybody same. Nature makes us inherently different to different things. Now, when that risks are trying to hit the objective, do you know who is the first line of defense? Who is the first line of defense? Who should prevent that risk? The first line of defense is called TC, corporate governance. See, corporate governance is a thought process. Understand it. Like in case, whatever objective, I want to be healthy. There is a lot of risk which is trying to hit that objective. Who should prevent? I means who? My thought process. No, everything begins with the thought. See, I am able to control this pen because of my thoughts. Thoughts is something. That's why we as a human, see, everybody else, everything else is an animal in this world. But we, when we are humans, we say we are two entities. We are mind and body. Because mind is considered to be supreme there. Because everything starts from a thought. So, corporate governance is something supreme, which is a thought process. Now, which is the body which owns this corporate governance? Corporate governance is a thought, no? Oh, corporate governance principle, governing the organization in the interest of the stakeholder. It is a thought process, it is an idea. Now, who is owning that? That idea is owned by whom? Who is the body? TCWG, physical entity. Now, how do they do it? Through internal controls. If you don't have the internal controls, then see, you want to be healthy. One gulab jamun pose one risk, fires one arrow towards you. Now the thoughts says, no, no, no. I have to follow the high standards of behavior, should not do it. And your this thing, what is that called? Uh, tongue is telling, no, one gulab jamun, no, eat. No, corporate governance says no. Your thoughts says no. And you straight away walk. You establish the internal control not to see that side only next time onwards, or you take the different route. That is the internal control you establish, so that the risk is prevented. 
now still certain risks may go unknowingly then comes the second line of defense called the audit committee but the internal controls what you establish you may not be competent to monitor it that is why along with the audit committee comes another set of professionals called the internal auditors who are always generally under the audit committees not under board of directors so that to, they ensure that independence there even in the organization also they are to be independent because definition itself says that the internal auditor should be independent now if still something may cross now comes another independent guy called external auditor the moment it crosses external auditor no then your objective is gone but when there are three three checks no it is a very rare that something would have crossed three checks and you would have hit so this way the world operates today so this is the object okay this is the internal auditor now whom internal audit is applicable section 138 of the companies act says following class of companies shall be required to appoint the internal auditor within 6 months of their applicability so there can be examination question mcqs based on this no do you, do you know who are those companies have you come across anywhere any anyway, if you don't remember no first just i wanted to test you remember yes every listed entity every unlisted public company having paid up capital is 50 crores or turnover is 200 crore or outstanding borrowing is 100 crore or deposits is 25 crores at any point of time in the financial year the moment your borrowing crosses 100 crores or deposits uh, crosses 25 crores from that day within next 6 months you have to appoint the internal auditor or for a private company the turnover is 200 crores or deposits bo borrowing is 100 crores deposits are not there now you have to appoint within 6 months who who, should, who can be internal auditor in india who can be who can be an auditor in india is there anybody else no because after chartered accountant there is one full stop who can be an internal auditor we wished there would have been one full stop there no we wished but no they put one comma they say along with in, in as per section company said there can be a chartered accountant comma we said first of all we don't want icwa we will manage but they said okay let there be management accountant okay cost accountant or any other professional but see besides two of us no it is very rare that somebody would have appointed somebody else because we have almost in fact we have consumed that profession internal audit profession with lot of standards and other things any objective and scope of internal audit function okay now what this objective is they have given no they have given from sia 230 standards on internal audit so what you are going to study is somewhere standards only now now example is very important here because for every objective and scope they have given the example in the study material so it is possible that in the examination question they may ask you the examples so half mark for this half mark for the example so monitoring of the internal control for example performing a three way match what is three way match see three way match means if you have to process one invoice how do you check whether that invoice is correct or not first of all rate has to be checked with the purchase order rate so you take the purchase order and check whether the rate is correct you go and check the grn and whether the quantity has been received so if the quantity is received at a proper rate you multiply and get an amount and check whether that amount is as per the invoice of the supplier this process is called a three way match and it is one of the internal control you have to check whether every invoice is processed after a three way match examine the financial and operating information like audit of sales delivery record sales commission to identify the correctness to the revenue accounted like you have accounted some revenue you cross verify that revenue based on the commission given to the agents analytical procedure type of thing this is what internal auditors does review the operating activities like review of the inventory management activities to prevent the damages auditor not concerned if damage account has damaged now what you have done not to damage and all is not my concern no but internal auditor has to see the stacking is correct okay damaged items are you are consumed first because it is operational related no the auditor has got no role but internal see internal controls are established in which area how many areas generally internal controls are established where did, come? did did i ask this question somewhere previously where 
because he has said you have to monitor the internal control when i am telling you have to monitor the internal control internal controls are generally established for four areas what are those operations asset safeguarding financial reporting compliance where it is told which obviously i will not leave tell me now which standard 315 where in 315 components of internal control then they started to tell look there are five components of internal control understanding of the control now as an auditor i am more interested in the financial related controls operations unless it is going to affect my financial reporting i am not interested but here you may have to monitor everything now risk management also you may have to go through like looking into complex financial instrument transactions governance you have to go through like whether you have achieved your overall governance okay whether your organization structure is proper is the like overlapping span of control so many things are there auditor is not bothered only all these things i am concerned only with my balance sheet but here their objective and scope goes beyond your financial statement this is what i want to tell you it's like monitoring of the internal control related to three way match revenue and more more or less like financial related but your governance organization structure and all why auditor is concerned there follow no so this can be very important examination question now what are the activities of the internal audit function this is coming from sia 210 the internal audit function performs certain critical activities remember the keywords to achieve the objectives stated in its engagement letter like they need to define the overall plan methodology oversee monitoring of various audit assignments because it's not just one audit you are given no you might have been asked to do so many things you might have were you asked to verify the asset registers there you might have asked to verify the pnl balance sheets you have to plan acquire engage and review the performance training development of the staff you need to have a competent staff identify source engage and manage external experts you may have to get the exp experts communicate with all the key stakeholders and develop and maintain quality evaluation and implement program see this is a technical language huh? because it is coming from a technical document so expectation is maybe to study it and write it as per that because every word see in, i don't want to go deeper here but you know in standard we discussed when i speak about the word called the source that source word has got so much depth, deep meaning it's not just an english word written there no source means i need to consider a appropriate thing like what i am trying to do there okay again identify the source like source means i have to get one expert there from which source so many things are there okay it is not relevant here here what is relevant is you have to remember this this is called the critical activities of internal audit function not objective and scope and don't mix it don't interchange the answers okay understand which question what they have asked and now what is the responsibility of internal audit with respect to the accounting function and the financial records now coming to the audit related thing what is the responsibility is to ascertain whether the internal control system is adequate safeguard assets against misappropriation operate independently of the accounting staff you don't be an accountant there not to involve in executive functions like physical verification of stock and all you don't get into it what they have done you have to recheck it you are an independent checker there observe facts and circumstances bring to the notice of the authorities critically appraise the policies associate closely with the management your job is to be you are in a management cadre there and enjoy the independent status you are independent no when you have done internal audit yes you are you are independent to the organization nobody could have spoken to you nobody can talk to you because you are going to directly report to the top management there nobody can manipulate on the only people who can manipulate you is the tcwg but your standard says that don't permit that See, since you are an external auditor you go resign and come out don't do something with just because it is told by the tcwg you are an still an independent guy only you are an independent independent public practitioner so that's why it see tomorrow if somebody says that okay so and so audit firm has done internal audit that itself lends lot of credibility provided we just follow the standards told what is told in the standard now what are the management functions and scope of internal audit the managerial functions includes your planning what is management function first pc or second pc you come across management tailor 
then some people are there no what is management management includes planning organizing staffing directing controlling now controlling i have put under word underline because there is something told on that internal audit is an important element of management controlling function see management includes five aspects you have to plan maybe internal auditor may not be involved there this is a planning cell you have to organize the resources a finance guy may be doing that job you have to staff hr is involved okay internal audit no direction supervisor is going to do it but question comes see you do everything but who is going to control it because controlling another word is accounting and counting count count unless you count how do you control it so this particular aspect of managerial function supported by the internal auditor understood the scope logic here because they will ask you don't get confused again managerial function supported by the internal auditor this is the keyword now internal auditor is the important element of controlling internal auditor shall review each of the managerial functions so in this regard internal auditor shall include review of internal control systems and procedure by default everywhere we'll write that custodianship of the assets compliance with the policies regulations relevance and reliability of information the organization structure utilization of resources more of like a performance audit accomplishment of goals and objectives so these are all the scope of internal audit function with regard to the managerial functions because the word scope we will also come across here objective and scope okay but they will tell you with regard to the managerial function now what is internal control review design and operation effectiveness and check cost benefit see you have to check the design check the implementation and operating effectiveness there are three things you need to check and check whether the cost benefit analysis has happened review the custodianship verify the existence segregation of duty safeguarding of the assets control on the intangible assets are there organization structure important from the examination point of view this includes review of grouping of activity for managerial control like how the organization has to be structured should you have the product wise structure region wise structure because if you go to hindustan unilever for example i'm just telling you the organization structure is northern india eastern india southern india you go to another company they say ayurvedic product fmcg product and under that they have got an organization structure so how do, should you group your activity so that you can have a better control for somebody says sir for me product wise grouping is better to have effective control you go to L lg they say electronic segment another segment so examine no functions enjoy undue dominance you cannot make any one single function to be powerful review that there is no overlapping of the responsibility same thing is done by two set of people examine there is a balance between authority and responsibility yeah obviously too much authority is given without responsibility is dangerous too much responsibility is given without authority nothing is nothing is going to happen there person is going to resign and go examine the reasonableness of span of control what do you mean by span of control below one person how many people should be there see even though there is a king under king one lakh army is there span of control is below that king five or six important people are there you call him general this minister that minister and then it will go step by step and even the last battalion no that supervisor one captain or somebody will have 10 people so that's called span of control because you cannot handle big number of people your span of control is very small maybe 5 to 10 people effectively you can manage them then you need to have an organization structure there review the segregation of duty as per the structure and review the managerial department in the enterprise process of managerial development like how do you develop the next line very important no next line should be developed otherwise people will resign and go organization will be in problem so this question is very highly specific they may ask you this question as part of the scope what all the factors to be considered in the organization structure by the internal auditor you are getting a flow no now utilization of the resources check whether sop is there because without sop sop is like a benchmark and when you talk about resources utilization is like a performance audit you need to have a criteria it is a criteria should you verify operating responsibility methods to establish the standard review certain assumptions 
reasons for the wide difference and check whether the facilities are properly utilized. Now, what are the basic principles of internal audit? Yes, you should be independent, integrity should be there, objectivity should be there. And what are the qualities of independent auditor? Some of the specialized knowledge and expertise that internal auditor should obtain. See, examination question, huh? qualities, they may say qualities, no? They may ask you in the form of specialized knowledge and expertise. Like you need to have understanding of the management controls, financial expertise, knowledge of operation, technology, commerce, law, taxation, like you tell what all your CA final subjects and your inter subjects, no? Tell. IT control, advanced IT also you join there. Management principles and technique and finally the confidentiality. Okay, with this first thing we are done is introduction where we discussed what, for whom internal audit is applicable, who can be that person and if you are appointed as a chartered accountant, because for cost accountant I cannot go and give this SIA 210 and all, no. Cost accounting may have their own SIA, but if a CA who is in practice is appointed, because if a CA who is in employment is appointed, no, then these standards may not be applicable. No, it may be there, you may follow it, but like you are not apply a subject to like not like a public accountant there. But this is primarily meant for the public accountant. So if you take up that internal audit. So the, what should be your quality? What you should be? Okay, what type of uh, managerial functions you support? How do you review the organization's function? Well, that is the basic part. Okay, in the next class, we will discuss about the performing internal audit function. Yes, in the previous class, we discussed about the internal audit. The first thing is about the introduction of the internal audit. We have seen that why internal audit is required, who can be an internal auditor, what all the qualities, like what should be objective and scope, what should be the knowledge he need to have. It's the very basics. It's like more like 200 series, principles. Now we will talk about the performing an internal audit. Now performing internal audit, there are five steps to perform the internal audit. First, they say you have to obtain the understanding about the entity and the environment. Then you have to do planning. Okay, we say SA 300, but there is one standard called SIA 310. They didn't discuss it. You could, they have discussed about the general contents here, one overview. General information gathering, you need to gather the information. Perform audit checks. Okay, so when performing audit checks, you have got so many standards like SA 5, 6, 320, materiality, 330, substantive procedure, your uh, test of controls, 350, evaluation, so many things are there. But none of the things have been discussed. You have some general points you have to talk. And finally, the reporting, there is SA 360 and 370, SIA 360, 370. That's it. Okay, so there can be one question, how do you perform an internal audit? So you have to tell that we perform the internal audit under these five steps. And if you start, if you look into the pattern, pattern starts with the obtaining understanding, planning, execution, reporting, evaluation, reporting. Any audit for that matter, say, it goes like this only. Okay, next internal audit reporting. So you have performed. Now how do you give the report? We said that there is two standards, 360 and 370 which govern it. Internal audit reporting is generally undertaken in two stages. Understand. One, report on specific audit engagement and periodic report. See what happens in the reporting on specific, like you have been appointed for specific tasks there. At the end of the particular assignment, the internal audit report is issued covering which area, function or a part highlighting the key observation. Like you have been appointed as an internal auditor to evaluate the asset related thing, one assignment. So we verified it, report it or treasury activities, the verified or risk based internal audit of a bank. That is one particular assignment to you, do it. This report contains the details of the manner in which the assignment was conducted, what is your key findings. Again, is issued to the auditee with the copies to the local manager, whoever is the local people because they have to respond to your observations. Now, now there is another called a periodic report. Okay, so here it is a comprehensive report of all internal activities. Such reporting is normally done on a quarterly basis. That means here you are appointed on a continuous basis for a wide range of activities. The report is submitted to the highest governing authority responsible for internal audit and SIA 
it covers only first type of the audit report now generally what happen no internal auditors generally are the inside people companies can apply say for uh, when uh, internal audit becomes mandatory to you you generally have it as an internal one department only now their job is not one aspect it is a continuous basis like this year they planned okay let us focus more on the operations next year they say we well, let us focus more on the compliances third year again they say no no this year we have to do operations and financial reporting so they spread themselves into different different areas let them fourth year they decided let, let us do the management decision making so they look into different different areas so it is a continuous job alternatively you can get the assignment for a specific assignment only generally practicing cas get the first thing this is like more how more like an in house type of thing like if you are an in house employee who are into a continuous task, ta task looking into different i think i hope it's clear you are into different task then you get into it but the sia what the institute has come up with they have come up with the first type of the report because second type is more customized that you decide you apply your mind what type of assignment you are doing because you are spread across the different aspects of the organization suddenly you decide let me do the p2p audit but when you go to an external auditor you go and tell them look sir do p2p audit that's one assignment for me but if it is a continuous basis no it's like one lump sum has been paid and during this year this much of man hours you have to give it to me now, organization say i will use it wherever i want it i may use it in p2p i may use it for financial reporting now what are the key elements of the report if you have got that specific assignment you need to define key elements includes your objective scope approach statement that internal audit has been conducted as per sia so that there comes one credibility standardization every auditors in india will write that means some common understanding will be there like how did you do that internal audit then executive summary of the observations why because this top management will see they don't want to get into the detail summary of corrective actions required generally in audit we don't give this we say this is our observation financial audit but internal auditor not just you highlight the problem you tell what can be done and the nature of assurance which can be derived from the observation like what type of assurance you can derive because primarily when we are looking here the first type of activity which is a specific assignment we are trying to give them a confidence look sir if you come to us as an external i am an independent practicing unit there yes as an independent as an internal auditor for outside world i am not an independent person but for you i am an independent person i can give you an assurance there that gives you more confidence from the management perspective also rather than in house person because in house person what happen no when you are an you have got an internal audit department you need to establish one familiarity there with the people and there can be a familiarity threat but when an independent third party comes who is not an external started auditor but that auditor will okay he is like my friend to me he is working in line with me the way i told tell him wherever i tell him so it gives more confidence that's why you have to give that assurance you have to follow the sia understood no so there are two type of assignment this is a periodic like throughout the year which area to be work not sure i can use it anywhere like you have given me 500 hours in a year per hour so much i'll pay you then i am going to tell okay verify this area verify that area in the first case i have given you a specific assignment only now content and format these are the key elements should be there overall what should be the content where some level of assurance is required that means you need to give that confidence okay first of all they said you apply your professional judgment and recipient preference whatever they want because this becomes a very difficult task for standardization financial statement is very easy balance sheet across the world same so i can standardize and tell this is what my audit report is but internal audit subject matter itself is difficult no benchmark may be difficult there okay how to evaluate it what standard you say internal control good or not on what basis i should say okay benchmark should be my coso framework now then i should say okay as per coso framework is correct or not so it is difficult so they say you apply your judgment follow sia 380 it says that it starts with audit scope period executive summary critical findings detailed findings with the root cause rating 
of the issues like high, medium, low, so that somebody becomes sensitized. Something you say high priority, like I give you no know, P1, P2, P3. Ah, P1 means it's like a sensitization. Somebody applies their mind and say, look, this is something really critical. You need to understand. P3 means not required. So low level means okay, it is there. I have observed it, but I need not focus immediately. Audit recommendations should happen and response received from the authority action plan with the timings. One more activity comes which is not required for auditors called a follow up. Now there is one standard internal audit SIA 390 on the follow up part. Chief internal auditor is responsible for monitoring and closing of the peer period issues. That means next time when you come as an internal auditor, maybe you are a third party or an employee. You have got a responsibility to see to it that the previous issues have been closed. So you are going to prepare an action taken report of the previous audit. You remember this is the in PSC audit also we had come across. Who prepares that action taken report? Who is monitoring that? Popu. Committee on Public Sector Undertakings. Now they follow that prepare action taken report. Internal auditor shall follow up the actions. If no action is taken, you have to figure out the reasons. And if the management is going to accept the recommendation, review the manner and extent of implementation. So ultimately, when you come with your observation, come with the action plan, see to it that the management accept it, know, figure out the reason and arrive at one conclusion. And if they accept, whatever your recommendations are there, it has to get implemented. So beautiful, maybe, I don't know. Tomorrow, it, there can be a huge demand for this internal audit. Because once the realization comes that somebody is contributing, see, we will go to the next chapter, investigation, there we see that forensic accounting we are going to talk about. This was not, this profession was there with all, us always. It was not separately recognized. In 1930s, no, one CPA in USA helped one department to crack one case and put one gangster behind the bar for 10 years. Then they realized this is beautiful. And from there, forensic accounting journey came. See now what happened now this internal audit, people may not realize the importance, power of it, but once you start adding value to the organization, telling look this is the inefficiency, you bring that element of performance audit, efficiency, economy, effectiveness, you bring the concept of propriety, nobody told you maybe. When you go there, since you learned now oh there is something called a propriety audit, this way I can look the thing, see ultimately it all goes with you, the perspective with what you look at it. If you look at it from the compliance perspective, you look only from the compliance perspective. If you look from the propriety and compliance and efficiency, something beautiful will emerge. And then the management realize, oh, there is a value addition in this profession. So we have to get these professionals involved in our business. They give the touch of independence also. They come with a different diverse background. They have seen different, different entities. When they recommend us, they recommend it from the external audit perspective also multidisciplinary dimension they will bring it followed no then ah one more thing added to our profession called internal audit it's already there with us but it will catch up the momentum again so we don't know next 10 years what how the things will be now the relationship between internal audit and external auditor there is a lot of overlap in the work of internal and external auditors the work of internal auditor is integral to the internal control so the moment your internal control comes into picture, external auditor's work gets affected. How? Need not be. But see, I'm talking about integral to internal control. How internal control affect the work of external auditor? Why? I can do my audit procedures without considering internal controls, no? See, how it affects, because when you talk about the balance sheet, the numbers what you see here, which are certified, you know, it passed through internal controls and come. It didn't, didn't come all of a sudden from nowhere. So it has got a direct bearing or I can say it has got an inverse relationship to your efforts. Internal controls has got an inverse relationship to your efforts. Fantastic internal controls, less efforts. Weak internal controls, 
more efforts. Now, how do you get that confidence whether the controls are good or not? Huh? Who is to supposed to monitor in the organization? Internal auditors. So, their work is very integral because if they are not there, internal controls are going to fail. And in this chapter now, they have discussed about SA 610. In fact, SA 610 is not discussed anywhere. Here they discussed certain things. No, I think in planning also they have discussed. Ah, what they have discussed here, no documentation. Only one aspect of internal audit has been discussed here. Rest everything is discussed somewhere else. Audit committee or the board shall formulate the scope. We discussed, we know that functioning, periodicity, methodology as per section 138. So they have to form the scope. Otherwise, if you give to the board of directors or if you give to the CFO no, or CEO, they will restrict your scope. Because they know the way the fraud is happening. No? They see to it that this internal auditor will never go that side. That's why they should not be within the uh, like organization structure. That's why you evaluate the organization structure to figure out where these internal auditors are located. Are they independent third party? Are they bound by any professional standards? And if you find that one of the independent audit firm itself is their internal auditor who are reporting to the uh, audit committee. See, that gives you a lot of confidence. As per CARO also, now in CARO 2020, external auditor has to examine whether the internal audit system, whatever you have established, is commensurate with the size. Like you are a big organization and one small audit firm you have appointed as an internal auditor. Why? Because you have to comply with section 138, no? Otherwise, one observation is going to come there. No, see the check, what they have done. In CARO, you have to report to the members that the external auditor should be so and so. Like external auditor should confirm that the internal auditor is in line with the system. Then you do one thing, no? appoint one small local external auditor also. Simple, no? See, for the namesake, you are a big organization. CEO is monitoring everything, controlling everything in and out. So, section 138 came and say, have an internal auditor. Internal auditor is going to find out everything, no. So, have for the name's sake, appoint one small internal auditor. Then they said, okay, let the external auditor report that to the members. Do one thing, no. Appoint one small external auditor also. No. They said, external auditor should not be appointed by the board of directors. Who should be recommending it? Audit committee. They brought one check there. So, how you will allow one small audit firm to, and audit committee when they are appointing external auditors, they have to see that the external auditors are in commensurate with their size. So, the corporate governance structure has put a lot of checks. So, that the fraud, that's why no, you don't listen now, here about the frauds. You see the 1990s, 2000, that decade, so many frauds, so many frauds. Nowadays, where are frauds? Checks are there, students. Professionals are working on that. Now, extent of independence exhibited by the independent auditor is a great assistance. Now, tell me what are the three factors you need to evaluate before you decide whether should I take the work or not, except uh, internal auditor's work. You are an external auditor. There is one internal audit department. You want to decide whether you want to take the work of the internal auditor or not. What are the factors you are going to evaluate? Yes, do you remember? Sorry? Competence. Objectivity. You remember the Draupadi Vasraparan example I told? Bhishma, Vidura. And that was the third one? Due care. Objectivity, competency and due care. Okay, and which is this part independence is related to here? Objectivity. If you are independent, you will be objective. Bhishma was not independent. He can't take any decision as a king. So, he was biased. Now, ex evaluation, uh, external auditor shall evaluate the function to determine the nature, timing, extent of the procedures. Perfect. Relationship is fine. Okay. Now, what is the difference? See, this is the relationship. Huh? Two examination questions can be there. They will ask you what is the difference between an internal auditor and external auditor. Yes, 
internal audit is performed by independent internal audit function within an entity or by an external party, but it is always an independent body. Examination is primarily into the operating controls on the financial statement. They may not be concerned with much financial statement because if the controls are fine, financial control should be fine. Financial statement should be fine. Appointment is done by the audit committee or board. They are done by the member recommended by the audit committee. Users of the report, top management, stakeholders. Report provides weakness in the internal control, truth and fairness of the financial statement. Is the last aspect of internal audit is the audit trail. Audit trail means log, edit log, trail, trail of the transactions, how it moves, is a visible trail of evidence enabling one to trace the information contained in the statement reports back to the original input source, like how it came, where it happened, where all the, it left the trace. So audit trails are chronological record of changes that have been made to the data. Like whenever you go to the log or trail, you see when, who initiated, is there any changes, if yes, who did it, whose ID it happened, when it happened, what reason it happened, what changes happened. So records maintained as an audit trail may include when the changes were made, like timestamp, who made it, user ID, and what data was changed, data or transaction reference, whether it was success or the failure. Okay, they have added certain things. Okay, they may ask you in exam, is this something new? Entity shall establish certain IT controls to ensure that the audit trail features are functional. Why? Because now there is a requirement for an auditor to verify, external auditor. There is a new requirement which is coming now under Companies Act. Okay, so auditor has to verify the audit trail, audit log has been established and that has to be monitored by the internal auditors. So audit trail feature. Uh, entity shall establish the controls to see that the audit trails are functional, operated and not disabled. So audit trail feature has not been disabled, user IDs are assigned which is not shared, changes to the configurations, audit trail configurations are authorized and logged. That means somebody goes and changes that trail, no? Is it that itself it gets logged. Access to the trail and the backup is restricted and who access that trail that also logged and periodic backups have been taken archived as per the statutory requirement. One aspect, okay, totally out of sounds, may, it may sound like from nowhere, but maybe an examination question. Yes, with this we are done with the